Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is part seven in our series, LT Spice Beginner to Expert. And in the series, we're going to show you how to become very proficient at LT Spice. Now, if you haven't used LT Spice, I encourage you, uh, if you want to learn electronics, or if you're interested in designing electronic circuits and want to simulate them before you actually build them and see how they respond as you change components and change values, um, it's a really wonderful way to learn electronics and design electronic circuits, and it's a free piece of software. So I encourage you to look at the um, series here, the playlist, uh, LT Spice Beginner to Expert, and also look at some of the other um, playlists and videos we have on this channel. We talk a lot about electrical, electronics engineering, and a lot of tech-related topics. I encourage you to take a look. So in this video, um, previously we talked about plotting and sources in LT Spice. In this video, we're going to look at a specific source, and it's what's called a piecewise linear source. Now, an unfortunate term. In fact, a piecewise linear is a very, very useful type of voltage source that you can use in LT Spice to design a custom voltage source where you give it a bunch of points and it generates a voltage source from those points. So what do we mean piecewise linear? Well, let's jump over to a spreadsheet. And this is LibreOffice, which is a free spreadsheet, kind of like uh, Microsoft Excel. And this shows you what a piecewise linear source does. What we've done is I've added a bunch of time values and values for the waveform at each of those times. So I've given it 10 points or 11 points. And what it does is this plot takes each of those points and plots it on a graph like this. And for the points that you haven't specified in between the dots, it generates what are called interpolated values. It basically says, okay, here's a point I got and here's another point, and in between those, I'm going to assume there's a straight line, and I'm gonna draw a straight line. So I'm gonna assume that this signal, um, here we are at one second, here we are at two seconds, and I'm gonna assume at like half a second, the value is 0.5. So it's generating a continuous waveform by assuming a straight line between the points, and that's why they come up with piecewise linear. You give it the pieces and it generates linear interpolation between the points. And it's really wonderful because you can use it to do a whole lot of stuff. You can specify very complex and very custom waveforms in LT Spice. Now keep in mind that here we have a voltage source and I can right click. Um, it also comes with a bunch of predefined waveforms like a pulse where you can specify the parameters of the pulse, sine wave, exponentials, frequency modulated waveform. Um, but this is one where you can get very, very customized and you can feed it basically points and it will generate the waveform. And there's two ways you can do it. You can, gen you can give it, you can select this and give it a bunch of values. What we're gonna look at is how you can use a file of values like we had in the spreadsheet and feed it all those values and it will generate a waveform. So now why would you want to use this? Here's just one example. Here is um, a waveform that is measured from some real world equipment on a bench and here's an oscilloscope trace of a very noisy sine wave. So you got a lot of noise in here and let's say I've got, I see this trace in my scope and I've got a circuit that I'm, I've prototyped on my bench. And what I want to do is I want to figure out how to get rid of this noise. And I want to design a filter circuit that gets rid of all this extraneous noise and just gives me a clean sine wave. Well, what I can do using this piecewise linear is I, we've got a video uh, in this channel showing how you can convert this scope trace into a text file, a CSV comma separated value text file. And we would be able to use that CSV text file and bring it into LT Spice and use this waveform as a source in LT Spice and then feed that into whatever we design as a filter. 
and see what that filter does and see if it cleans up this waveform. So that's just one example of how you can use this piecewise linear. Another thing you can do, as we showed before, is you can generate a waveform in like a spreadsheet, however you want it. You can customize it and save this out. You can do just a file, save as, and save it out as a CSV or a space delimited file, text file, and bring that into LT Spice. Now, another use of the piecewise linear is, for example, we've got this fairly complex circuit we used in our previous series on ATX power supplies, how to simulate and understand them in LT Spice. And let's say we have this, this input circuit where we take the sine wave from the wall outlet, the 120 volts RMS here in the US, feed it through a full wave rectifier and some capacitors, and that provides the input to our buck converter at this V in. So let's say what we wanted to do is we don't really care too much about this input circuit. It just needlessly complicates this and might slow things down. We could measure this V in and use that as just a single source, piecewise linear source, as input, and then just get rid of all this and replace it by a piecewise linear voltage source. Now, there are some caveats to that that we'll talk about in a bit, but that's just one other way you can use a piecewise linear source. So how do we generate a piecewise linear voltage source? Well, the first thing is you need to make a text file, and there's a bunch of ways you can generate that. As we said, you can get it from your scope, or you can do it from Excel, or you can even do it manually. And here we've got a very simple piecewise linear source definition that we can feed with just these two lines of time, comma, value pairs, we can feed this as a piecewise linear source. And what we will get is this. Here I've got a piecewise linear source. And we have gone in here and said our simple pwl.txt file and using that as a source with a 10 ohm resistor. And here is that file, simple pwl.txt. It has a time and value, and it's only specifying two points. And I've got a simulation that lasts for 30 milliseconds, and I've got one point at zero and one point at 30 milliseconds. And to show that, I can right-click here, as we talked in the other video on plotting, and look at the data points. You can see there's a data point down here and, a, and two data points up here. So the actual input data for the source is only these two, and then it is interpolating, putting a straight line between those points. Now, there's some things you need to know about these files for a PWL source. First of all, there can be no headers or anything else in this file. It just has to be a time and value pair on each line. So if you save from a scope or you do an Excel spreadsheet, or even if you save a plot from uh, LT Spice, it might have a header or multiple headers. You need to remove all those headers and just have a time and value. Also, it seems to work with either a comma separated value like we have here, or just a space separated value. Now, another thing to keep in mind, you want to make sure that your PWL text file doesn't have millions of points because that is going to cause a lot of pain and it's going to take a whole lot of time to do the simulation. So, you know, if you have like thousands of points, that's fine. But when you get into millions of points, that'll take forever to simulate. So just be careful. You know, if you, you have a PWL text file, look through it, make sure there's no headers, make sure there's a reasonable number of points. Um, and the other thing is, keep in mind that you're going to be giving a specific definition for how long this PWL source is going to last. In this case, we've said one point at zero and one point at 30 milliseconds. So what if you set your simulation to like 50 milliseconds? Well, you have to keep in mind that you've specified nothing past 30 milliseconds. What it's going to do is it's going to take this 30 millisecond point and it is going to extend that value of 10 to all the other times in your simulation. So for example, if I edit the simulation command, instead of going for 30 milliseconds, I go for 50 milliseconds and then run it. 
you can see what it does is it stops at 10 volts and extrapolates what's called extrapolates that value out to 50 milliseconds so keep in mind that you have only specified that 30 milliseconds you got to be aware that it's going to just extend that or extrapolate that for future times now what is it going to do if you have a 30 millisecond source pwl source but you're only running for like 20 milliseconds well it's going to use this uh, straight line and it's going to it's going to end when the voltage is a little over six volts so it's going to interpolate for a simulation time less than the source time and it's going to extrapolate for a simulation time greater than the source time okay keep that in mind now one more important thing we alluded to before let's say i'm thinking of replacing this big section input section of our power supply with an equivalent piecewise linear source and i do that by measuring this v in through a simulation and just using that as a simple text file and just erasing all of this well you can get into problems because this piecewise linear source is an ideal source when you're replacing what is a fairly complex source you've got a resistor in series and as you change this output as you load it down um, the real world uh, output of this is not going to be ideal because you're going to have current flowing and you're going to have higher voltage drops and you're going to have to think about maybe modifying this piecewise linear source with a series resistance or whatever because it's not really an ideal source it's going to vary the output of this uh, input circuit is going to vary as you vary the load so you really got to think about how you want to model this uh, is it okay to have a, an ideal piecewise linear or do you need to add some series and parallel components to make it react uh, as the real circuit would do so keep that in mind okay so i think that's about it for the piecewise linear source um, if you like any of these videos hit the like button subscribe hit the bell notifications and most of all please let others know that we're here so we get some views otherwise take care have a really good day thanks